In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to St. Stephen's Cathedral. It's April 4th, the day before Palm Sunday. And the church is gathered to celebrate the diaconate ordination of Corey Bruns. I didn't miss anything, did I? Well, if that's been 77 days ago, uh, and no one's counted them probably with more anticipation than, than uh, Corey, but <clears throat> indeed the whole church has counted in anticipation, not just for this event, but for so many events that we have delayed or celebrated in ways that are not typical or common or desirable to the church. And even today, we all look a bit different, masked and distanced from one another. But nonetheless, the church's rituals, the church's celebration is great. The church's call continues to be made and answers continue to be given. So as we begin this celebration, we are mindful that we gather as sinners and we pause to call to mind that sin and ask for mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people now good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your Let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant we pray that this your servant, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, 
may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you, a prophet to the nations I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak, I am too young. But the Lord answered me, say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I play, place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. 
who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and, beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way, rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. 
I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It is not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let Corey Dale Bruns, who is to be ordained a deacon, come forward. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose our brother for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. It was at the Last Supper that the Lord Jesus instituted the priesthood. Having given meaning, new meaning to the Passover meal, Jesus instructed his apostles to continue that sacred meal in his memory. But the context for remembering Jesus was defined before the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup of wine. For the gospel relates, Jesus took a towel and he girded himself and he washed the disciples' feet and noted that if his master and Lord, he had washed their feet, then they in turn must wash each other's feet. They must serve others. They must embrace the lowliest and serve the least among us. It was in this context that the apostles realized soon that the church's new ministry of service must grow, grounded at the table of the Lord, but outward reaching. We read in the Acts of the Apostles that they, those apostles, chose seven men. Now the scripture says that they chose reputable men, but we don't have to stick to that criteria today. But I readily admit and trust in Father Jason McClure's and this assembly's affirmation of the calling of Corey Bruns. I noted particularly that his brother and his sister gave affirmation of this. They've known him rather intimately from the moment of creation. The apostles chose seven men and presented them who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to be spread and the number of disciples increased greatly. The work of those first deacons still, nearly 2,000 years later, is not finished. 
In fact, as popes of the last quarter century have noted, we need to replow the ground already covered to bring a new evangelization to the world, to rekindle the hearts of the faithful. Corey will be asked to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity. He will be asked, do you, con do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ? Very essentially for a deacon, he will receive the gospel of Christ and be reminded that he is its herald. And one of the most beautiful lines from the ordination rite is there, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. So you come now with immense faith that you have believed what has been taught to you and given to you by your family and teachers and friends and formators that you have yourself assumed a role as a teacher within the community in these years of your formation and that you practice what you teach. When I receive an evaluation from the seminary on the different candidates, I'm particularly interested in how they perceive that last, that you practice what you teach, that there is a mark of authenticity about the man. Not that he is without flaw, not that he has not ever made a mistake, but is he what he says he is? And this ordination rite calls him to continue that. These lines might rightly, these lines about believing what you read, teaching what you believe and practicing what you teach, might also find their way properly in the rites for baptism and confirmation and holy matrimony, if you think about it, that we must believe what we've been taught teach what we've been taught, and then practice what we have been taught. My friend, consider the ministry to which this man is called. He will help the bishop and his body of priest ministers of the word, of the altar, and of charity. He is to make himself a servant of all. As minister of the altar, he will proclaim the gospel, prepare the sacrifice, and give the Lord's body and blood to the community of believers. It will be his duty to bring God's words to believer and unbeliever alike, to preside over public prayer, to baptize, to assist at marriages and bless them, to give viaticum to the dying, and to lead the rites of burial. By the laying on of the bishop's hands and the prayer of consecration, he will be bound more closely to the altar where he will perform works of charity in the name of the bishop and of the pastor. By the way he fulfills these duties, may we recognize him, may all recognize him as a disciple of Jesus who came to be served, came to serve, not to be served. That always trips us up. There's something unconscious going on there. <clears throat> Corey, you are being called and raised to the order of deacon. The Lord has an example for you to follow. As a deacon, you will serve Jesus Christ, who was known among his disciples as the one who served others. Do the will of God generously. Remember the selfishness, that selfishness in any manner is not from God, and that no servant can to serve two, no, ma no person can serve two masters. Serve God in humanity and love and joy. Today, you make a formal and definitive commitment to live celibately for the sake of the kingdom of God. Like the men the apostles chose for works of charity, as told in the Acts of the Apostles, you must be a man of good reputation, filled with wisdom and the Holy Spirit. Show before God and others that you are above every suspicion of blame, that you are a true minister of Christ and of God's mysteries, a man firmly rooted in faith. Never turn away from the hope which the gospel offers. For now, you must not only listen to God's word, but credibly preach God's word. Express in action what you proclaim by word of mouth. Corey, the church honors you in calling you. It is one of the great distinctions of my office as bishop to call you today to holy orders. With God's grace, in a little under a year, presuming natural disaster doesn't intervene, you will be called yet again.
to the order of priesthood. But do not forget that you are and always will be a deacon, a man called by God and the church to a ministry of charity. Just seven years ago, Cardinal Jorge Bagaglio was in dress, in address, introduced to the world as the new Bishop of Rome. And the posture that he first took that still stands in our minds is that he came out to be introduced to the world and introduced as one who had taken the name Francis is that he bowed before the hundreds of thousands of people and asked them to pray for him. This traditional time that he would impart a blessing, he asked for blessing. Now there's nothing radical about that. But it came across in that moment as radical. It was different. Don't ever hesitate, my brother, to ask to be blessed. Remember, too, the gospel says, it was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. And this I command you, love one another. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment in the day of Christ Jesus. Dear son, <clears throat> before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I am. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I am. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? I am. Do you resolve to keep forever the commitment to remain celibate as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in the service of God and humanity? I am. Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you, so celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? I am. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ whose body and blood you are? You are minister at the altar. I do with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment in the day of Christ Jesus. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on this, his servant, who in his kindness he raises to the sacred order of the diaconate. Let us kneel.
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy Angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint James, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Thomas, pray for us. Saint James, pray for us. Saint Philip, pray for us. Saint Bartholomew, pray for us. Saint Matthew, pray for us. Saint Simon, pray for us. Saint Jude, pray for us. Saint Matthias, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Cecilia, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Meinrad, pray for us. Saint William of Vercelli, pray for us. Saint Hildegard, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Joan of Arc, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint Francis Solanus, pray for us. Santo Hermano Pedro, pray for us. Saint Paul of the Cross, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Saint Theodora Guerin, pray for us. Saint John Henry Newman, pray for us. Saint Pius the Tenth, pray for us. Saint John Paul the Second, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, Lord deliver Jesus. us. We pray from all evil. Lord, deliver, deliver us. We pray from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, Lord deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, Lord, we ask, we ask you, you hear, hear our, our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you, you hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you, you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Lord, Lord we, we ask you, you hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, Lord, we ask, ask you, you hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers. And graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing this man we present. For in our judgment we believe him worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple, as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your sons' apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to those chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on this servant of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon him, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that he may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of ministry. May there abound in him every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in his conduct so that by the example of his way of life, he may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may he remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, he may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
given into your hand, you have made it will become for us a blessing. Fill us from the Lord God of all creation with your goodness. We have this wine to offer through the divine work of your spirit. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you make your only begotten Son high priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred mystery through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Let me eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Stephen and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, with the order of bishops, that this your servant, who has been ordained today as a minister for the church, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom and power and glory now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servant, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, he may be found faithful as a minister of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity through Christ our Lord. As part of the rite of ordination, when Corey was presented and declared to be worthy, you affirm that. Uh, let us affirm our choice and God's blessings and grace upon him now. I'm pretty sure he's smiling. Uh, also, I mentioned his family in the homily, but also uh, I, I want to thank them. None of us would be here if they had not been instruments of faith, if they had not formed and developed their children and their family in ways of faith and brought them uh, with regularity to the table of the Lord, uh, a vocation would have not have bloomed and blossomed. And so, Thank you. I said at a confirmation here at the cathedral the other night that uh, in the course of these weeks I had delayed or postponed uh, at least 30 occasions of celebrating confirmations in parishes. And I said, I greatly regret that, but I said, the other piece of that is that that means that's 30 pieces of cake and 30 cups of punch that I got cheated out of as well. And so that continues today. You know, as much as we want to celebrate, and some of you will find ways to be together and celebrate, we're still not in a position where we can take this celebration beyond, beyond this assembly, and certainly not for the sharing of, of cake and punch and food. Uh, but thank you. Uh, I, I thanked his parents for forming him in his faith. But every single person here, I'm sure, is important to Corey. And he could probably go around, we're not going to let him, but he could go around and tell a story of how each and every person here has been an instrument of his vocation and of, his, of the grace he's found to say yes. So thank you for being here. And let us uh, never celebrate an occasion such as this that we don't uh, address the young people, young men and women in our midst, and challenge and invite them to consider that God may be calling them to an extraordinary vocation of service and ministry and charity in the church. And pray that uh, those young people here and people we know, if someone doesn't tell a young man or a young woman, God may be calling you, maybe it never occurs to them, or maybe they don't feel worthy. So let's all be instruments of that. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord let his face to shine upon you. Amen. May the Lord grant you peace. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace.